What's going on guys, K-Pine here and welcome back. And in this video, I'll be featuring the team that brought me on a 9-on-1 run to Veteran as well as the leaderboards in the Spring Cup. This team features double Poison Jab users in the Tentacruel and Rosa raid as well as Ferrothorn in the back to close it out. I'm running Sludge Wave on Tenta instead of Acid Spray because it helps a lot against the opposing Tropius and Dugong considering they don't normally shield moves from the Tenta in case it is the Acid Spray. And Sludge Wave also helps against opposing water types when shields are down. And speaking of shields being down, you're going to generally want to save those shields for your two back Pokemon. Roserade on the safe swap is an absolute menace as it has essentially no hard counters except Mawile where it can still force a shield from the shadow. And please run Leaf Storm instead of Grass Knot. Leaf Storm does an insane amount of damage and helps extremely in closing scenarios. As for Ferrothorn, throw on Flash Cannon for those opposing Trevenants, Abomasnows, Roserade, and Tropius. And with that, let's get right into the battles. Alright, getting to the first battle, we lead Tentacruel into Lantern. Terrible lead for the Tenta, we're going to swap into that Roserade. My opponent swaps into a Walrein. I'm going to load up on Energy, can't quite make it to the Leaf Storm before they make it to an Icicle Spear, so I will fire off the Weather Ball on the CMP tie. They let it go, and now because they let it go, I can make a play for Switch here. This shows the absolute power of Roserade in this situation. Instead of Poison Jabbing all the way down, I decide to play for the CMP tie to get that to guarantee that shield back, but they end up letting it go and giving me Switch advantage anyways, which is fantastic because now I get this Lantern aligned to my Ferrothorn where I can absolutely shut it down. They do go for the Thunderbolt, Ferrothorn shrugs that off no problem. I'm going to throw three bullet seats for good timing and then the power whip to bait the flash cannon. I'm expecting my opponent to shield because they want to keep their Trevenant healthy as my Ferrothorn to just run through their lantern then. So they do end up shielding the power whip bait and now I can bring in my tentacruel. I will shield their first move so I can get off this scald for the potential scald debuff of which I do get. And now we will be able to survive the Shadow Ball and make it to another Scald right here to take out their Trevenant. And with their Trevenant gone, Ferrothorn is in a prime position to clean up this match. Lantern does get the Spark down, but they realize the match is over and they concede. GG's to my opponent. Next battle, we lead Tentacruel into, what do you know, another Lantern. Same game plan as last time, we're going to swap into our Roserade. Opponent brings in that Fire Fang Mawile I was talking about. This is a hard answer to the Roserade to guarantee switch advantage, but we can force a shield back with that with that Weather Ball. Excuse me. So they do end up giving up a shield. And here I'm going to wait out my clock and now bring in my Tentacruel. I'm going to try and go for a Poison Jab down before they'll make it to two play roughs. So we'll see what can happen. This is going to be close. Play rough does land. It is resisted due to our poison typing. And it's not looking like I'm going to make the poison jab down. So I would go for the scald one before they make it to another play rough. But they end up settling for a power up punch. So I can let that go over farm to the back to back scalds. Swap into my Ferrothorn and they have a Roserade. With their Roserade instantly swapping into my Ferrothorn like that, they can actually win the 1-2 to two shield scenario against my Ferrothorn going straight Weather Ball. So it, this situation comes down to a bait. We decide to full send the Flash Cannon, which they let it go, and we take that one. If the Roserade is a little slow swapping into your Ferrothorn, then you can go straight Flash Cannon. But like I said, since my opponent was quick on their swap, we had to make a bait call. We full sent it, and it worked out for us. GG's to my opponent. Next battle against it and Empoleon lead. We're just going to stay in this and play out the zero shield scenario. And we're going to go straight for these skulls. If you do get the skull debuff, it makes this matchup significantly better for you. As the Empoleon, after they land two drill packs, won't be able to farm you down and will have to land a third drill pack. But in this situation, I do, don't get the skull debuff on the first one. We're going to see if I get the skull debuff on the second one. I don't either. So that means this Empoleon is going to be able to steal wing me down before and not have to throw a third move. In which case, I would bring in my Ferrothorn to Bullet Seed down 
in which case my ferrothorn can tank that that drill peck no problem and then after my ferrothorn tanks that drill peck i'm actually then gonna instantly swap into my rosary to get an energy advantage as with their empoleon out of the way in the lead their two back pokemon tend to be grass types of which an energy lead roserade puts in a lot of work plus if they have an empoleon on the lead there's also a decent chance they have a roserade of their own behind it of which in that case you again would want an energy advantage in your roserade so like i said if you don't get any skull debuffs and they're able to stay when you down bring in your ferrothorn to take that energy and then swap into your roserade after they throw that energy or if they're forced or if you do get those skull debuffs and they're forced to throw three drill pecks to take out your tenta bring in your roserade after that happens but in this matchup we just go for straight flash cannons here against the trevenant which the first one gets shielded the second one's able to land and we take that one ggs to my opponent next battle tentacruel into shadow of Balma snow this is a fantastic lead our entire team has a pretty good matchup against the shadow of Balma snow they swap into a jellicent and you got to be quick on your swap here one poison jab and from the tentacruel to recognize that jellicent swap to then bring in your ferrothorn instantly throw that power whip so you so your opponent is not able to take advantage of the desynced fast move alignment there. And if you do throw one poison jab and then swap to your, your Ferrothorn, you're quick on the swap, you'll actually be able to land the power whip and get the bullet seed down before they reach two shadow balls, of which is very, very crucial. So with that bullet seat down, we leave with a ton of energy, make it to the flash cannon against the Abama Snow to force that shield, where we can now bring our Tentacruel in against the Abama. I will give up a shield here to respect the energy ball. It's just the weather ball. Nice bait by my opponent. And I go for the Sludge Wave here. I'm not exactly sure if Scald would take out the Abama Snow. I kind of underestimate how glassy Shadow Abama Snow is. I think a Scald might have been just enough from there. But we do go for a sludge wave just to make sure or force that show from my opponent, which we do. And here we call the weather ball bait. I decide to let it go because I know that Roserade up a shield will be able to close out the match against whatever they have back. But they, since they weather ball baited, we can survive that. I can also survive their second weather ball, land the sludge wave, which again, I recommend against acid spray over the polyrath. And we take that one, GG's. Next battle, Trevenant lead. We are going to stay in this lead matchup and again, play out the zero shield scenario. We hope that they go for the seed bomb in this matchup, but if they go for the shadow ball, we're gonna play it the same either way. Load up and go for the sludge wave. My opponent here makes a very nice catch onto their Empoleon, props to them, but we're now instantly gonna swap into our Ferrothorn. But say your opponent stays in and does not make that catch, they give up a shield to respect that sludge wave, then you're instantly going to swap into your Roserade after to get an energy head start, regardless of whether they went for the Shadow Ball or the Seed Bomb. You hope they go for the Seed Bomb again because your Tentacruel will have a little bit more HP when you swap out. But if they go for the Shadow Ball, it is no problem. Now in the back, they have a Roserade. I'm going to load, fire off, throw three Bullet Seeds for good timing as a three turn move user against a two turn move user like Roserade, go for the power whip bait, which does get shielded, of which in return allows me to fire off this flash cannon to force both shields from my opponent. So we do get the second shield from them. And now here we instantly swap into our Roserade because we will outpace to our weather ball before they reach their second weather ball. And here I actually wait a turn expecting them to try and make a catch on their Trevenant because if they make a catch onto their Trevenant, then if, if I throw it away and they make a catch on their Trevenant, I would then need to have the perfect undercharge to win this game. But by waiting that turn, I can see that catch attempt, load up on energy to right before the Shadow Ball, take out the Trevenant, and then throw one more Poison Jab to get to the next Weather Ball against their Roserade, of which I'm running a decently high attack to Roserade, so I can win those CMP ties. As you'll see, we do get the 5-0 set as we move on to the next, the first game of the next set. It's a Polyrath lead. We're just going to stay in here. 
like normal and fire off this sludge wave. We're going to let this go. No, everything the polyrath throws is going to be resisted to the tentacruel. They go for the scald. We're going to load up on energy and we would fire off the sludge wave right before they would make it to a potential icy wind, but they swap into a tentacruel. So we're going to go for that scald for that scald bit of chip to help bring it more into power whip range for our ferrothorn. Fortunately, we do get the Scald debuff, but even if we didn't get the Scald debuff, we would be swapping into our Ferrothorn. Then that's kind of like the same way to play it out against a Tentacruel safe swap from your opponent as well. If your Tentacruel in the lead, they safe swap their Tentacruel. You're going to fire off your Scald as soon as you get it to take advantage of that one turn desync by, swippy, by switching. And then as soon as you land that squall, Scald, you would then swap into your own Ferrothorn. Here we are able to get the Bullet Seed down against my opponent. And because we get that Bullet, bullet Seed down, we get both shields with those Power Whips against their Polyrath, of which I'm now going to hard swap into my own Tentacruel. I will shield to respect the Scald, it is just an Acid Spray, but either way, with this dugong in the pack we are going to be fine and again another reason why i prefer having sludge wave if we had scald we wouldn't really be able to hit this dugong for much damage but because we have sludge wave we get to land that one sludge wave for heavy damage i let the second one go just because we would be double debuffed at the, that point and i wanted to leave a shield for rosary just in case they are able to make it to an icy wind but either way i can load up on energy throw six poison jabs to cmp tie the dugong this weather ball will be enough to take out the dugong and then from here my roserade will be able to take out the polyrath as well weather ball won't be quite enough but the subsequent poison jabs will do the trick ggs to my opponent next battle we lead tentacruel into an opposing tentacruel now this is one matchup that comes down to entirely on the luck of the scald debuffs so we're just going to go for these scalds right away. Your opponent won't, who's also leading in Tentacruel, won't normally swap out of this matchup. But if they do and catch the scald on something, well, now you have that 50-50 shot of getting the scald debuff, but it also gives you alignment, of which this team with alignment does really, really well on. So like in this situation right here, they catch that scald onto their Ferrothorn, but that's perfectly fine because now I can bring in my Roserade, load up to... Ooh, nine poison jabs play to the cmp tie of their flash cannon and at this point because of that skull damage that weather ball will be more than enough to take out ferrothorn and back in comes to tentacruel now they have a tentacruel lead like me ferrothorn in the back like me i'm kind of expecting it to be the mirror team with a roserade as well from them of which in that case i'm going to play it like it is the roserade and then adjust as needed here i think this is the acid spray that they get to but it's actually the scald my roserade ends up surviving on one hp which is very very clutch if that scald ended up taking out my roserade i would have been in a very very tough spot but we survive on one hp get off the weather ball against the superior to get that shield and now ferrothorn will be able to close out this match so it's not the Rosa Raid like I thought, but it is a superior. But anyways, since it is the superior instead of an opposing Rosa Raid, this is even better for us. We're going to land that Flash Cannon. Oh, excuse me, that Flash Cannon's going to get the shield from them, of which in that case, I can then swap into my Tentacruel. Shield up the Aerialist from my opponent. And again, Sludge Wave coming in handy right here, as we will be able to land the Sludge Wave to take out the superior. GG's to my opponent. Next battle, we lead Tentacruel into another Tentacruel. So again, relying on the luck of the Skull debuffs here. We're going to go for the Skull right away. My opponent actually ends up going for an Acid Spray. An interesting play, getting that two stage defense drop with the acid spray so then they can go for skull to do more damage later an interesting tactic but that's actually completely fine by me because uh, as you'll see in this situation they'll outpace to that skull where now i'll reach my own 
My own will do quite a bit of damage, get them into the red as well. And from here, I can then hard swap into my Roserade, right? I know my Tentacruel is going to get farmed down. If I hard swap into my Roserade, I can Poison Jab down before they reach another move, as well as get that ever important energy advantage. Roserade is all about that energy advantage in this cup. So we swap out, get that energy advantage, see it's their own Roserade. And then from here, I'm going to farm up, play to the CMP tie, of which surprisingly, I actually lose. Again, as I mentioned, I'm running a pretty high attack Roserade to win those CMP matchups but I do lose that CMP tie. Either way, that's fine, because I can let it go and get an energy lead on my Ferrothorn instead, of which this team does actually end up being the mirror team. And now with this energy advantage on my own Ferrothorn to outpace these flash cannons, I should be able to take this shield as long as I watch for a catch from my opponent or I make a catch of my own. And it seems that at this point, the opponent has exited out of their game once they saw I made that catch. But yeah, like I mentioned, Roserade on the safe swap here, very, very deadly. But more importantly, you want to try and get those energy leads with it. Tentacruel, I like to play out the zero shield scenario in almost all situations because Tentacruel either wins that and gives you the switch advantage and alignment you need or it soft loses. And in those soft losing scenarios, you just bring in Roserade to get that energy advantage. And there's basically nothing your opponent can do at that point. GG's. Next battle, we lead Tentacruel into an opposing Tropius. Another fantastic lead for us. We're gonna see what my opponent wants to do. They swap into a Dugong. And Dugong is another one of those Pokemon, just like Jellicent, you need to be quick on the swap into your Ferrothorn on. Throw one Poison Jab and then the swap into your Ferrothorn and then throw that power whip as soon as you get to it. By doing that, that will allow you to outpace the Dugong to two um, power whips before they get to two icy winds. It also allows you to get to that first power whip before they are able to debuff you with that icy win. So by being quick on that swap, it forces your you to get off, allows you to get off that move first and forces your opponent to make the first shielding decision if they want to. Now in this situation, I'm not going to quite get the bullet seat down. So I do go for the power whip as the power whip KOs through the shield as even a shielded move does one HP worth of damage. And at that point, my opponent decides they don't want to play anymore and concede the match. GG's. Next battle, Ferrothorn lead. We're going to throw the Scald after 10 Poison jabs if your opponent doesn't throw first, or if they do throw first, we're going to let it go. Throw one more poison jab for timing and then go for the scald here. We're hoping for that attack drop, as if we do get the attack drop like we do here, we will comfortably survive the next power whip. If you don't get that attack drop, you still will survive the next power whip to get to your second scald, but just barely. It might actually be IV dependent on your tentacles part, like you need to have a high bulk tentacle. But either way, once you fire off that second Scald, you're then going to swap into your Roserade. As again, if they stay in, you'll be able to get the Poison Jab down before they make it to a Flash Cannon. If they end up firing off a move, you know it's only the Power Whip and can no shield it. So by you getting that energy lead on your Roserade, that forces them to either swap out, of which your Roserade can then put in a ton of work, or if they stay in, you get a massive energy lead. So down goes the Tropius, see what they want to bring in, and their third ends up being a Roserade, of which we get not one, but two Weather Balls off against a Roserade to force both shields. But even getting off both of those Weather Balls, we're still in a pretty tough spot here, as this Roserade is going to outpace us to two Weather Balls before we make it to a Flash Cannon. So with that said, we need to be able to make a catch onto our Tenna to win this game. So I'm going to throw two Bullet Seeds, wait a turn, and then swap into my own Tentacruel to try and catch their Weather Ball. But my opponent's patient. They don't see that Bullet Seed come through. And with that patience, they are now going to be able to take this game. GG's to my opponent. And with that loss, that will bring us to a 9-1 run over these two sets. Of which this one was a 4-1. That will be plenty enough to bring us into the veteran rank. And we did continue on in the day to make it onto the leaderboards as well. Tentacruel is a great Pokemon in this meta due to its extreme neutral play, 
and I feel Ferrothorn rounded out the team quite nicely. But I do gotta say, the true MVP of the team was Roserade. Those poison jabs combined with the extreme damage output of Leaf Storm really do a number to your opponents. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.